our TV show, who show us having sex? Oh yeah, like a lot. Is this your girlfriend? Yeah, and my co-host on the show. Oh, you love comics. Yikes. I mean, I mean, it was great. You guys, my name is Rhea Butcher. It's funny because it's true. I'm 100% butcher than all of you. You are a woman. Now, camera. what's it like being a woman in comedy? Oh, this is my favorite question. Oh, do you prefer female comedians or comedians? You can just say, um, comic. What do you like, Sarah Silverman? Were you like Amy Schumer, somewhere in between? As you can tell by my haircut, I am a thundercat <laughs> and also a giant lesbian. I can't kiss you when your whole mullet is in my mouth. Hi. How do you make your art and commit to that every day and still pay for the never-ending shit? We're comics. We don't have savings. We have fun outfits. It'll be fun. Come on. We'll make people laugh. We'll tell some jokes, you know? Please stop making me make people laugh. Ooh, it's very close. Yeah. Look where it is. Camaria, everybody. So funny, so nice, so in love, so full of shit. Is anybody buying that? Welcome to the rest of our lives. Did you just have sushi? Mm -hmm. Thanks, everybody. Hello. Hello. Hey, guys, congratulations on the show. It's fantastic. Thank oh, you so thank much. you so much. You're welcome. Yeah, it I is good. I it's think good. I, it's, it's, fan, it's great. I think I can count on one hand the shows about gay women ever. Oh, yeah. Right? What about the shows about gay women created by gay women? And in the show, the characters are married, and in real life, the actual creator stars are also married. That's one show. How about that? Show. That is one show. show. That is one show. <laughs> that, and that's unbelievable. So the two of you are married, and you've, you know, you've done comedy together a little bit. Uh, I imagine that's true because it's in the show, and because of the show, I imagine everything that's in there is true and a part of your life. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing is made up; it's all factual. Well, I mean, like, look at the jacket I'm, my character is wearing. Super and then, close. Like, look at my jacket, and then look at the shirt Rhea's wearing and Rhea's shirt. Yeah, look, hey, so, look. as you can tell, the characters are actually pretty dissimilar from our real. So you either brought your stylist with you, or <laughs> that's you dressed yourself for the show. Yeah, we dressed ourselves for the show. <laughs> uh, well, we just said to the costume designer, like. Hey, straight up, our real clothes, they're the best you're going to find. Just go into those dressers right there. Yeah. Pull it out. We'll wear that. <laughs> yeah. um, so kind of a hacky question, but I have to ask because it seems so close to your lives. How much are you willing to put in? How much are you willing to, how much do you need to leave out? How much did you find in, in the writing process where you like, wait, that's the line. Let's not cross that. Do you want to tell them about your line? Well, my line was nudity because I was like, screenshots live forever. And don't want to do that. And I was like, Rhea, you're so wrong. We should be naked the whole show. <laughs> and uh, we actually shot appearance. some, there's a bunch of scenes where we're in bed together and we actually shot two versions where I'm like not wearing any clothes and she's wearing like a full suit, suit of clothes. Suit. Yeah, like the kind of a like- A scuba outfit. Yeah. Um, but we ended up using the one where I'm clothed as well because she's right. After was, you I actually right. see yourself yeah. naked, on a camera, you go, well, they didn't pay me enough money for this. <laughs> it's enough, I mean, it's enough to drive a performer completely insane. You understand, like, I, I think actors and actresses are considered vain or narcissistic all the time, but as soon as you're on camera a fair amount and you're on camera from, like, here down, I think men and women are like, I'm at the gym 24-7 all the time now. There's nothing oh, yeah. else I can yeah. do. Yeah, and as you can tell by our bodies, that's true for us. Oh, We're you both look great. Always like, at the gym 24-7. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're at, the, I'm gym. at the gym right now. We're at the gym right now. Well, you guys cut yourselves, cut the nudity out. So I would imagine that was so you didn't have to go to the gym this month. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, honestly, I feel like we should tell the stars of Fifty Shades of Grey, like, you don't have to go to the gym as much if you just wear a full pajama suit. <laughs> But what was the what was the emotion? Was there an emotional line? Obviously, you're comedians and you share a lot about your lives on stage. That yeah. sort of comes with the territory of being a comic. But was there an emotional line for the two of you when it came to writing? Places that your relationship have gone. Obviously, now's not the time to go there. But just things that you were kind of like, maybe we don't want to bring this up or relive this hard moment that we had. Well, thematically, 
everything in the show is true. It's just that some of it didn't happen exactly as it is. And that's not just to protect ourselves, but also because we're really in a relationship and we have people in our lives. We didn't want to just write the people that we know into the show and therefore destroy every relationship (laughs) with every person that we know uh, by throwing them under the bus. So, you know, when you watch the show, it's all real. It's Mm -hmm. just maybe not the exact person and timeline. I like to describe it as we were just in Canada. And if you've ever been to Canada, it feels like the United States, but the candy's different. (laughs) That's what our show is, if that makes sense. It's the Canadian us. Elaborate (laughs) on that, please. (laughs) I just mean, it's the same, but, you know, it's just slightly different. It's our life, like Cameron was saying. It's autobiographical, but not everything is totally accurate. Yeah. Now, one of the sort of central conflicts or central things that characters kind of don't understand about the two of you is that you're in a working relationship and are also comics. Mm-hmm. Right. And there's competition there. Did you find is that there was actually that within your relationship or it was more fascinating the way everybody assumed that that stuff was there within your relationship? Oh, no, we are so competitive with so each competitive. other. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And, you know, part of that is because for some reason there's this idea that, like, two lesbian comics, well, you can only book one, you can only have one on a show, that's a live show, you can have only have one on a TV show. Uh, and so we were like, no, we're gonna take two of them, put them on a TV show together, because it is possible, I know this is gonna blow your mind, but lesbians actually can have different experiences from each other. Crazy, what? right? Even, no way. even lesbians ho- both have at least one short side of their hair, yeah. and so it's like, we have had different lives than right. each other. And we came from different families. What? Yeah, you we're not it? even related. I thought the two of you had been telepathically communicating <laughs> right. this entire conversation. No, we're, uh, we're different and we've had different experiences. Like if I poke you, do you not feel Ow. Yeah. <laughs> also, uh, our characters don't die in the show, right. which is another lesbian trope. So it's like you can't put two lesbians in the same show. And also, uh, if you do, then one of them has to die like a fiery death right after they have sex for the first time. And we said no to that. That's not happening. <laughs> Immediately after the sex, there's a death. Oh, yeah. That's truly how it goes, because I actually think a lot of times, the, you know, the shows have straight male writers. And, hey, no problem. Obviously, I love straight men. I'm a lesbian. That's my target demographic. But... <laughs> <laughs> um, But those straight male writers, I think, are limited in understanding what happens for women. And then you take a woman that's not trying to eventually end up with a dude, and it's like, what else would possibly happen to her? So she sleeps with a woman, and then it's just like, well, do you have any other story ideas? I think straight white male writers are limited in the stories that they can tell about minorities in general. And I think a lot of times when you get cause stories, it's because they feel a responsibility to add some sort of cultural representation and their only knowledge of that is like news stories Mm -hmm. about the gay community and those are always going to be tragic or headline grabbing they're never going to be like you know two lesbian women live their lives as (laughs) stand-up comics and (laughs) and enjoy the fruits of life together exactly right absolutely or like go to the grocery store yeah exactly (laughs) and decide like which milk they're gonna buy right right right. obviously almond milk (laughs) oh you guys don't know that much about lesbians you're learning now. Um, one of the things about the show is, in, 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 I believe it's in the first episode, and it's in the trailer, you're, you're being interviewed, and uh, you're being interviewed by ostensibly a straight white guy who's like, what's it like to be a female comic? Which is the worst question. But then I think the show sort of goes on to kind of answer that to a certain degree, especially in the second episode, with a male comic who's in the, in the green room just sort of trying to form some sort of macho analysis on the word bitch and using the two of you as sort of like a sounding board, Mm -hmm. which I think is interesting to sort of explore after you've said, I don't really want to answer the question of what's it like to be a female comic. Can you talk about that at all? As if that was a question. Yeah, do you want to to start with that? No, you you take it. Right, I mean, this whole show is really a long-form answer to that question, which is a question you get asked more than any other question when you do this job. And that frustrates me not because I hear it so many times, but actually because um, 
really the question is, what's it like being a woman? Because being a woman in stand-up comedy is not any different than being a woman in any other job or being a woman that's walking down the street. Like, we should actually talk about how terrifying and scary and amazing and wonderful and hard-fought it is to be a woman in the world. And so, what's it like being a woman in comedy? It's the exact same thing as I'm sure all the women in this audience have experienced in their lives. Um, we're in a male-dominated field. We live in a male-dominated society. Same thing. So this show, I think it's about comics, but I really think that it's universal in that way. It's an, uh, it's an assumption that for some reason uh, men don't make when they pose the question. An assumption about what it's like to be a woman in a male-dominated world. Why is the comedy world different? Yeah, exactly. And also, you know, our, our viewpoint stands out in the comedy world because the majority viewpoint, which is straight white male, is invisible. So it's like we're... You know these. Ooh, they're they're so they're so gay, and they talk about being gay all the time. And it's like, no, we talk about our lives, and our lives are, uh, you know, super gay. <laughs> <laughs> On a spectrum of one to gay, how how gay? Well, I mean, and I don't know if you want to. You know, we are actually married to each other, and <laughs> part of marriage is, you know what I'm saying, and. <laughs> I would say we are, we are even as gay as that. <laughs> Congratulations. Oh, thank you. Yeah, thank uh, you so much. When did this show start? When did you guys start pitching it out? When did you say, we should make a show ab about us? I feel like basically the day we met, pretty much. <laughs> like four years ago. Um, the first time we met, I was doing stand-up at Cameron's Open Mic. is where we like met four years ago. Yeah, um, you were hosting five? the open mic? Longer. Five years yeah, ago. Longer. Yeah, longer. Sorry. Yeah, I used to, yeah, we met in <laughs> Chicago. Yeah. And I was at the time I had been doing stand up for several years and Rhea had a day job as a graphic designer, which is also a part of the storyline from the show. Mm -hmm. But yeah, talk more about the Oh yeah, we just like we met each other and even before we were uh, you know, romantically linked, we were already just like trying to figure out what we wanted to make together and we were gonna have a podcast, but I think that podcast was essentially this show. Right. Know? Or a relationship. Like, yeah. we, for some reason, <laughs> yeah, we were drawn to each other, but we were both in other relationships, and we, weren't, we didn't want to end those relationships, so we just were like, hey, like, I want to, like, work with you so much. Let's like, make something. I just want to get together and just, like, work, you know, like, at your place or mine, just, like, work. <laughs> no, and that ended up being true. How hard was it for you guys to find the right sort of... Uh, producers for this show in terms of where it's going to go. I could imagine any sort of like any larger network, like a, a sort of a big network offering lots of notes or be, or feeling a little risk wary on, on a show like this because it's a story that hasn't been told. Yeah. This is what's so awesome about doing comedy right now. I mean, so right, this is streaming like, cause we live in this world where things like that exist. And our, our show is on a brand new platform that, is owned by NBC Universal, and the budgets are a little bit smaller, so there's less get less at risk. So they really can give you the opportunity to make the show that you want to make. And CISO was, I mean, they just like, I can't even tell you enough how much they, I mean, getting out of our way it wouldn't be the right <laughs> word, the right way of saying it, because they got behind us the whole yeah. way. They wanted us to look exactly like ourselves, and they wanted um, the jokes to be jokes we would feel comfortable with, and they were totally okay when we broke it to them that neither it of us would It does help die. that both of you have a very good sense of style to begin with, though. <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're beautiful. I mean, for sure. <laughs> Just the coolest. <laughs> Got so shy, but yeah, for sure. Um, no, they, they really shepherded the project through, and I feel like it's a wonderful time to be doing comedy. People talk about how there's this glut of television right now, and like, how can I possibly keep up with all these shows? Well, you don't have to. This is what's amazing. You can find stuff that really speaks to you. Like, take the pressure off. Relax. Yeah. Just like, you know, find some gals with jackets who you can understand and watch their show. And um, it's a really wonderful time to be doing this job. I couldn't agree more. There is this new conversation of there's so much TV. How do I keep up with all of it? And it's like... There's always been a lot of TV. Not all of it. <laughs> yeah. Not all of it is good. Find the stuff that you like. Take my wife and watch that. Yes. You know, there's not everything that comes out that some people like is the best. There's stuff for everybody. That's the best part about all this TV. Yeah, well, so many more people are getting so many more chances to make TV because there's so much more TV. Like eventually, there will be a TV show for literally everyone on the planet, and it will be so great. We'll all have our own. We'll just all have our own TV, TV shows. Show. We'll all have our own TV shows that we will watch. 
in our houses um, by ourselves. So it really makes so it'll totally make sense when someone says, "Oh, hold on, my show is on." By the way, I think I just I think I just invented Snapchat. Yeah, I think you did. (laughs) Self-driving Snapchat. Yeah, I did. What was your biggest fear going into writing, producing, starring in the show? Well, I think I was very worried about destroying my relationship with Rhea (laughs) um, because it's super hard to work with somebody that you also live with and spend all your time with. Um, I also trust her more than anybody in the world. She's the funniest, smartest person I know, but it is a real challenge spending this much time together and then deciding whether or not you still like each other. What was yours? What was your worst fear going into the show? Um, I mean, same, <laughs> number one. Um, my biggest fear was actually acting because I haven't done a ton of acting um, before, so that was my biggest fear. But, uh, but you're good so it. good in the show. You know, we've screened it a couple times now, and Rhea gets like all the laughs, which is so stressful. <laughs> So competitive still. <laughs> yeah, 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 of course. We know we're back there with a tally, just like, one for me! Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's Do you Did you ever legit. have these moments where you guys were sort of working on the show, you're with producers, and you have a disagreement in front of your crew or your producers, and you can feel the team kind of going <laughs> like this? Like, who do we side with here? And then you... No. You yeah. We tried really hard to keep stuff private, but I'm sure, like, when you see your two stars going like... <laughs> that you know something is... When they look like in Men in Black when he's wearing the human... It doesn't matter. My point is, um, (laughs) when the alien's wearing the human suit, you know what I'm saying? Anyway, it doesn't matter. You know what I'm saying. That's exactly what you're saying. That's what we looked like. It's just not right. There's just something not right. Yeah, something was not right. But we we tried really hard to keep that off camera. But there was definitely a moment where people were like, mom and mom are fighting. (laughs) And we were like, well, choose sides. Mm -hmm. Did you find... (laughs) Did you find ways to sort of not bring that home, or did you guys just bring it home and continue the fight or continue the conversation at home, too? Well, in one week, we are going to go on a vacation, and I think that at the vacation, we will maybe spend one day talking ceaselessly about all the things we have yet to talk out from making this show, and then hopefully we will spend six days sweating in Palm Springs. When, was, when did you finish shooting the show and, and cutting the show? How long ago did you finish it? Oh, I mean... finished shooting in the beginning of April? But we just got the cuts in like a, a couple weeks ago. What's amazing also about this show is that it was like piloted, written, shot, and edited within six months. So we're also really proud of that. Our turnover was super fast. That's fast, you guys. It's fast. We did a fast super thing. Fast. Most- oh, thanks for clapping for speed. Thank what you. a weird, why did I prompt you to clap for speed <laughs> or anything else? We're yeah, like, it's, a great it's movie. important politically that we're lesbians. And I just let that go. But then I was like, but we did it fast. And then I looked at you guys and you were like, speed is what we value. And that was weird. <laughs> that was weird of, of me, not of you. Does it feel important politically? Do you feel, I don't want to say responsible, it's so silly, but like you just said, it's important politically. Do you feel like you're responsible for representation, even though you are representing yourselves and in that regard representing a, a wider community that has less representation, but how does that responsibility affect you as creators? Well, I was, because we're lesbians, but because we're both white women, it was really important to me to fill the world not only with a diverse population of people, um, but also to represent our actual lives. Like, not just diversity for diversity's sake, but, um, you know, I don't hang out with only white people. My life is very, uh, a very diverse life. And so um, there's specifically a comic named Sam J who's in the show. She's in episode two. Um, So that was really important to me to show, like, different kinds of lesbians in the show and have it not just be about these two types of lesbians, you know? And... um, have like the audience scenes be very representative of actual audiences that come to our shows. Um, so for me, that was really important because um, I know like not a lot of TV shows and movies are doing that. So I wanted to make sure it looked like a real place. Yeah, and I actually don't, it does not feel like too much pressure at all to say responsibility. It's the whole reason that I got into any of this to begin with. You know, when I was coming out, um, I was raised in a super conservative Catholic family. I went to Catholic school my whole life, and I didn't know that gay was a thing you could actually be. I didn't know it was real, and it was very difficult to come out because I had no idea what my future could look like. I was very sad for a long time because I thought my life was over, Um, and it is really important to me to spend the rest of my life showing young queer people, older queer people, showing literally anybody that there is a future for you. You can make your own future. You can make your your life happen the way that you want. And um, 
I'm really proud of this show for that reason, I'm, and I really hope it does help other queer people. Well, I think one of the ways that it does it is that it shows, as you said, it doesn't sort of fall into the traps of the sort of classic gay stories that we've seen on TV and in film, which is the coming out story or the dying story. And it's really, really, really important to see uh, gay women, gay men, minorities living lives that are not trapped in the sort of cause story that we've always sort of had. Absolutely. I think that your point about bringing up the coming out story is, is really important as well, because you're right, that is so often the focus of film and television as well, is people realizing it, and then at the end, there's like a party or something terribly sad happens, <laughs> um, but we never really get to see like, so then what is the rest of their life? And so um, the rest of your life is awesome. The rest of your life is really great. You can have a ton of jackets and <laughs> cool haircuts, <laughs> and you can do stand-up comedy for a living if you want to or whatever you want to do. Some lesbians are chefs. No fucking way. <laughs> <laughs> when, wait, when, Cameron, when did you decide to do the half, 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 half? Oh my God, I call it a side mullet. Um, <laughs> I've had it probably since like 2008. You've never known me with. I haven't known you without. She's never known me with symmetrical Pre hair. Pre Keep side the same mullet. haircut for eight years is a commitment. Well, number one, thank you so much for your recognizing my service to this haircut. <laughs> um, no, well, it's evolved over time, and this is like this current iteration. But it just feels like gender-wise, it feels so good for me because it's like it's like like uh, uh, and then just like Ellen DeGeneres, and it feels right. <laughs> to me, it feels really right, but. <laughs> That one side is named, and the other yeah. side is just you know, sound. <laughs> More like affect. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> but I also think Rhea's hair is so great. Cool. Pretty I love, great. yeah. And yeah. I really think, again, this is like, these are tiny moments to call out. But like, this hair being on television is also not really a thing. Like, people really don't get to look like this. And it's yeah. amazing that we get to look like our actual selves and have... I mean, you guys have kind of the same haircut, and it looks good on both of you. And it looks so, much better than mine today. You actually did some, some work on yours this morning. A little bit. I'm out of bed. Just a touch. Yeah, it looks okay. great. Oh, come on. Thanks. Beautiful. <laughs> Let's uh, hear from the audience. Does anyone have any questions out here? I have a question. Hi. Hello. Hi. I wanted to know, what is the difference between your sitcom and like reality TV? Because it seems mm. like it's a little bit of both. So how do you balance it out? That's a really good question. That is a great question. Um, I mean, the main difference is that it is all heavily scripted, and we wrote it a bunch of times, and we acted it out. I know that sometimes reality TV can be shaped, um, but this is really things we're trying to say as opposed to actual moments of our life. So, And it looks very... God, I'm going to use a word that's going to make me sound so ridiculous, but cinematic. So we shot it specifically trying to make it look like a movie. Um, and I think sometimes in reality TV that like, you know, like, like that really harsh in your face, everything is like sobbing and right there uh, that reality TV has. This has like a much more even flow. And I think that's because we want people to feel mm -hmm. emotional while they watch it um, and not like big bursts of energy, but like a long, like a journey that you're yeah. going on with us. We're here to make friends, so. <laughs> yeah, we're specifically here to make friends. <laughs> <laughs> so if anybody wants to tell us their number, or like where they're gonna be, <laughs> you can't have our number. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for that question, that was so nice. Great question. Next question. Uh, hey, guys. Hello. Uh, uh, are there any comedians that you uh, look up to and would you want to have in your guest or like on your show? Oh man, we are so lucky because we live in Los Angeles and we have access to such wonderful comics who are in the show that we've looked up to or worked with for years. So um, Maria Bamford is in the show. She's a hero of mine. She's the first comic that ever brought me on the road. And mm -hmm. one of Rhea's for, heroes is on the show. Uh, as well. Paul F. Tompkins is on the show in an episode and he's like. Half of the three quarters of the reason that I started doing stand up. So it's really uh, super awesome that he's in my show. It's like a dream come true. Yeah. That's so pretty awesome. But we got so many great guest stars. Jonah Ray is in the show, and Mary Lynn Rice Cub is in the show, and Kurt Braunler, just a, Anna Varney. Yeah, a, a real cross section of everybody that's working in LA right now. And we were so lucky that they came and did the show with us. Those are some of the best that are, that are out there to have as guest stars in the show. Paul Tompkins. Nicest guy in the world, maybe. Super nice guy. He's oh, so he, nice. yeah. I mean, he's he's really like a mentor to Rhea in a really... Yeah, for sure. 
awesome way. Um, it's so nice when comics see potential in younger comics and want to encourage them to move forward. Absolutely. Next question. I think we have time for one more. Okay. Hey, I'm excited to watch this. I love CISO. So kind of piggybacking off that, um, did you write the roles for these guest stars or did you, you wrote it for, well, I don't answer it. Yeah, I mean, this is what is so amazing about this show and about working with CISO is that we got to cast the show and we got to write the show for the casting that we wanted to do. So we got the people that we wanted to play the roles most of the time, we got them to play the roles, and they're our friends in real life. So it's also really fun working with your friends. Like that's such a gift and wonderful experience on set. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, <laughs> actually, originally <laughs> Rhea was written for me, but right, then yeah. I was like, that actually seems a little vain to just like act against myself in the whole show. So, you know, we rewrote Rhea back into playing Rhea, back to myself. So is no, <laughs> <laughs> she's teasing you. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, the show is so wonderful. It's so funny. When is it going to be on CISO for people to see? August 11th it comes out. August 11th? August 11th, and every episode will be available so you can binge watch it. Watch it a million times. And Rhea has a new album coming out the following week. Yes, I do. Um, on Kill Rock Stars on uh, August 19th. It's called Butcher. Yeah. Awesome. So you could watch our show, and then you could listen to Rhea again, tell jokes the next week. So this is a <laughs> wonderful time to be you. And you. Congratulations, yeah. guys. Thank, Thank you, you so, so much, much for being here. Thank, Thank you. you.